So in order to build this reaction, we have to build it as basically one molecule, which is going to be weird, but we're going to start with the methane here, and I'm going to add a chlorine uh, onto the methane, and you can uh, try to orient it the way we expect the reaction to occur. Um, but after you do that, don't touch the orientation, don't spin this around anymore, because it's going to be hard to tell the difference between uh, the two chlorine atoms. It gets easier if you have a different leaving group, if you've got iodine or fluorine. Um, but when you're doing this for the first time with the two chlorines, try not to move this around too much before you start. We're going to add the other chlorine on the back side, and then we need to delete this valence on the, that chlorine because that's not bonded to anything yet. So this is now a chloride ion uh, with a minus charge. Uh, we can minimize the energy here. Um, when you do the hydroxide leaving group, you're going to want to minimize it before you add the chlorine uh, atom, the, chlor the chloride ion. Um, otherwise, it will reorient the whole molecule because the chloride ion will be attracted to the hydrogen that's attached to oxygen because that will have a, a larger partial positive charge. So you don't want that to rearrange. Um, once you have this set up, we need to build the transition state. And so you're going to go up to the top to the build menu and click on this option transition state. Um, if you read the instructions carefully, it's kind of weird, but we have to indicate that the electron from this bond is going to be taken. Chlorine's going to take it, take that electron with it. So we're going to click on the bond and then click on this chlorine and then click on the chlorine again. And now we have that blue arrow that's going to point towards that chlorine. And I know you want to rotate it to see it, um, but if you do that, you're going to screw it up so that when it builds it, it's going to be hard to tell which, uh, which chlorine is which. <clears throat> Next, we need to tell it that the electron from that this chlorine ion has is going to donate it to the bond. So I'm going to do chlorine, carbon, and then chlorine again. And now there's that dotted line saying I'm going to form a bond and this chlorine is going to donate an electron to that bond. Once you have those two blue arrows, then go down here to the corner and hit this uh, transition state, like make the transition state. So you click on that and now it has sort of equilibrated everything to right in the middle. Um, it's not exactly symmetric, um, but again, don't try to rotate this around too much to look at it because you eventually you won't be able to tell the difference between bonded chlorine and free chloride, okay? So the two, you want to keep those two straight in your head right now. Now, we want to go to um, the geometry option on the toolbar and constrain the distances. So we're going to constrain the carbon bound uh, chlorine ion. Uh, we're going to have that go from a, a normal carbon chlorine bond length out to five angstroms. So five angstroms is far enough away to say that it's unbound. So we're going to go down here and we're going to click on this lock. I'm going to lock that constraint and I'm going to make it a profile. So it's going to go from 1.767, I think it was, out to five angstroms. And just make sure you hit enter so that that's all there. I want to do this in 11 steps rather than 10 so that there's actually um, a one peak in the middle of this, of this energy profile. So once that's set, make sure you hit enter. And then you want to click on the other two, right, to constrain their distance. And the key here is to just do the opposite. So we're going to start this one at five angstroms. Uh, and we're going to finish it at the normal bond length. So 1.767, I believe it was, angstroms, and then the steps are locked uh, for both. Okay. So once you have that, now you can do the calculations. So go to Setup Calculations, and you want to calculate the energy profile, okay, in the gas phase, that's fine, and just use the PM3 option because that will be the fastest. Um, uh, level of theory to use. We do have on that chloride ion an unpaired electron, uh, or rather it's an, it's an ion. We have no unpaired electrons, but it is an anion. So you want to make sure you choose the minus one anion overall. And then you can submit this. Um, I'm going to save this as um, SN2 energy profile. 
because I already have uh, the one that I told you to do in my folder. Um, the job has been submitted. It's showing up on my other screen. And once it's done, it's going to pop up and it's going to say that your job created a new document. Would you like to open it? So you say, yes, I'd like to open that. Okay. And now it's, reori it's reoriented this now, but now it doesn't matter because we see that this is the free chloride and this is the bound chloride. And you can rotate that around and, and see what's going on with that now. If you go up here to the spreadsheet table, now you want to add the energy. So add energies. Okay. And click on that. Now I have the energies there on my spreadsheet and now I can make a, um, a graph. Okay. Create. And there's my energy profile. So here's the cool thing before you do anything else. Um, whether you can put this graph onto the, the molecule or not, it's up to you. But down here on the left side, you can also play the reaction, right? As one chlorine leaves the molecule and the other chloride ion comes in. So you can do that and see it step by step. Or you can just hit play and it'll go back and forth. And it'll show you here where you're at in the energy, right? So correlating the two together, right? So now I have um, back where I started. Hopefully it's not surprising that the energy of the system when this is the bound chlorine is the same as the energy of this when this one is the bound chlorine uh, because it's the same, basically the same configuration, <clears throat> okay? Um, now you want to make sure that now this isn't just a random axis, right? You want to make sure that this is as a function of bond length, okay? So we're going to go back to um, the geometry constrained distance, and I'm going to select um, this bond distance, my leaving group bond distance, and I'm going to choose to see the profile. No, I don't want to see the profile, but I do want to um, post that, hit that down arrow. And that should now show up as an option here. So now if I, now yeah, constraint one. So I'm going to go to, on my x-axis, I want constraint one. And on my y-axis, I want energy. Okay, and it's created a new plot. So the first plot I can delete. Uh, but this new plot now is that energy profile as a function of the bond length between the carbon and the chlorine. So you start out close, and then as that carbon, that chlorine, gets pulled away, right? It takes a lot of energy, and then once it's gone, it leaves, right? So that now we have this. And if you want to quantify your activation energy for this reaction, right? The transition state is right in the middle. Where is that? Right there. And the difference between your starting point and your transition state energy, that difference is your activation energy for this reaction. Now you can go back to this table and here's all your values. You can highlight these and, um, and download them or just copy them into an Excel spreadsheet so that you can use them um, later to compare between leaving groups.